Good day everyone, Eric Perez welcoming you back to our video series on the uh, fisheries reform process. Uh, today I'm being joined by Richard Hamilton. How are you Richard? Good thanks Eric. Mate, I appreciate your time. I know that it's, uh, weekends are busy for you guys and you're uh, trying to make ends meet so I do really appreciate your time. So let's get into it. Uh, quota management. My understanding is that you've been in a quota managed fishery for more than two decades, yes? Yeah, we originally kicked off 1998 quota system was brought, brought in for spanner crab. Okay, fantastic. So you'll be able to maybe answer a couple of questions that the punters out there will have around quota because there's been a lot of um, uh, angst about its introduction into other fisheries. So um, I know you have a story to tell, so we'll, we'll try and tell it in, in chunks. Uh, the first chunk being from your experience, has quota been uh, a flawless system that's helped you to expand your business over time, or because uh, that's that's how it's been sold to us that it's going to be the um, solution to all our problems? Have you have you found that in your experience dealing with quota management? Uh, not particularly, Eric. Um, how we started off was I was quite happy with the um, original allocation of individual quota because it was average five years catch you were given so I was happy with that because the the effort you put in the effort you got out at the end of it so we, we worked pretty hard and we got a decent quota and we were under the impression oh you've got your own quota you should be able to get a bargain and get a fairly good beach price for it but that, that never happened the you know that that was that didn't happen for a start so what, what are you telling me that the department doesn't understand the market that it's regulating us in yeah well we thought well beauty we've got our own quota now we can sort of have a bit of bargaining power but that that never happened from day one what i've got nothing against processes because that's all we sold to that in back in those days and without them we would have been buggered but um they, they gave a set price and that was the end of that. So that that was sort of not, we just carried on as usual. But uh, when quotas did come in, a lot of the fellows sold out. And um, if it's unfortunate, it may be, but a lot of that quota that was sold went to uh, larger firms and processes. So at the end of the day, a guy wanted to keep spanner crabbing if he didn't have enough quota he'd have to lease it out and to lease it out from a company you were bound by that company and you were set by their price so you know the the the, the, re, the price never went up when the quota system came in okay so it's not the golden egg that the department paints it out to be no it wasn't i for, for me i was okay but um it didn't didn't improve any any value on your product that's for sure it's up to the well years later i marketed my own product and that's the only way i got a decent price sure okay so um there there are other aspects of quota and you, you mentioned before how your allocation process was derived um would you be at all stunned that part of the process um, to determine allocation, at least as I understand it, in the mud crab fishery involved a 30% estimate of us overfilling the, the logbooks, so potentially lying in our logbooks. Did you entertain any of that crap when you were determining your quota? No, well, I, I can only speak for myself, but with our logbooks, it's pretty well. We, we just went in our logbooks and. Um, uh, with our sales dockets as well, so you can't really expand on that. That what what it was, what it was. Like we didn't we didn't put any extra. Well, at the time we didn't know there was going to be a quota system, so I don't see how anyone would want to uh, put false figures in if there was no need to. Sure. So I've got a question around the valuation of your quota. Now, very recently something happened to the value of your quota, and you know where I'm going with this, but for, for the yeah. benefit of those watching the video, can you explain what happened with what it was almost or just over 50% reduction in the value of your quota? Can, can you give us a story there? 
Yeah, it was only last year, last last quarter season. Before it commenced, it was uh, determined by Queensland Fisheries that the quota was would be cut by 50% across the board. So that meant straight away you lost 50% of your income for the year with no no um, compensation. But before you go on, why? What reason did they give for the cut okay. in the quota? Yeah. Apparently, uh, the reason was falling catch rates and. Uh, more effort put into the fishery and the catch rates were declining. So, as I understand it, um, and we've had a talk offline on this, that that increase in catch rate, so we, you had a quota uh, fishery that had certain rules and certain use of gear, mm. then suddenly in that, um, in that fishery, suddenly some vessels could get bigger or more powerful and catch more. Yeah. So, what was the point of having rules in that system of others that were more cashed up and there's nothing wrong with, with, with having a bigger business but if you're trying to regulate and maintain that fishery how did how did they justify allowing people to grow their capacity and and more to the point weren't they tracking the biomass if they were saying that it was potentially overfished isn't 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 quite a quite a managed fishery meant to deal with that stuff yeah well that's a good point eric um I think the demise of the fishery was it was when the quota system was set up in 1998 it was based on mainly small vessel operators that could carry a maximum capacity of 45 dillies which was the gazetted amount for the fishery. Years later uh, because of general fisheries permits uh, operators were allowed to bring in large vessels up to 20 metres carry up to 120 dillies, 90 dillies, and that went on for years and years and years. Um, so, so two things, Richard, for, for those that are listening. A general fisheries permit allows you to do things over and above what you might normally do in a fishery. So, for example, if someone wanted to do some research mm. or if someone, say, in a quite a finished fishery pushed for more dillies, they could get those. Is that correct, if they made the case? Yeah, well, that was my understanding too, Eric. I thought a general fisheries permit was for an exploratory fisheries permit, which I'm fine with. But when someone comes in and can de delete the rules, w w which, which is gazetted for the fishery, uh, and do what they want and think that nothing's going to happen to the fishery, it, I think it's um, absolutely wrong. And it's also discriminatory against a small operator that you've got all of a sudden a, a, a vessel two or three times your size shooting away beside you with three three times the amount of pots. Uh, we, we, we constantly keep, keep getting told we've got uh, world class fisheries management looks like um, mm. something didn't go right 